Hi there and welcome back, dear friends and deep thinkers. It's about getting resurrection powder here and wizardry 8. How does the locks and traps skill work on traps? Now what we're going to find beyond here is a chest. It's a trap chest. It's the first trap chest you'll find in this. And we're going to use that one now. But before we're going to give our bishop another alternative, some bullet stones. Not too much because we cannot carry that much. But hey. So there's some fish swimming here. They're also dangerous, but we will not encounter them for now. We go down and have a look at the trapped chest. And what I usually do um, to level up. Now, note if you press this button. This so bring you up to the next level, which is something we don't want yet. Later on. See yes. There's the fish. That's okay. But we're going to go down here and look at the trapped chest. Before. I see something. Take everything. <laughs> here we go. So, um. The best one we have is currently the Bard. And as you can see here, Locks and Traps skill. It's controlled by Dexterity and Intelligence. The Bard is not that great uh, from Dexterity and Intelligence, but we have leveled it up quite okay. Bard is leveling up quickly, and so we'll try it. But if you go for a full Rogue with Dexterity, please don't choose Intelligence for a Rogue then uh, you'll have even better results because that's one of the best skills for the rogue. But now let's let's go for it. So you click on it and you've got this menu. Um, you choose the best lock and trapper and then you do inspect trap to find out what kind of trap it is. And that gives you a rough guess. What we're going to do there is um, first going to check what kind could it be now that can trigger the trap and make it shoot something, usually at uh, the character trying to disarm the trap. So we're inspecting. Know that even inspecting trains your skill as well. So, mm, so this is green. So we know for sure that there's something in here. So we can choose, it is maybe dagger scatter, it's maybe alarm, probably not alarm. But because the skill is so low, some of this can be wrong. So um, it's good to repeat it for two reasons. First, to train the skill. And second, to find out what it is. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's Dagger Scatter, but we're just going to go and repeat that. So we train. What I do with the chests is usually I press three times Inspect Trap. And that will cause the Locks and Traps skill uh, to level up. What some people do is like they... They click inspect on the first chest for like hours and then the locks and traps skill is um, maxed out. That's also a good method, but I always tr try to make things not so boring. So it's, it's a little bit of an extra routine. So you just check three times. It also helps you identify the trap and boom. So it's tripped and still armed though. So we have to try again, but we know now it's a Dacker Scatter trap. What we should do with that high amount of damage, is we should really rest again. Light spell has expired, so we can recast the buff even. And then we'll try again. Here. So, let's try again three times. Hmm, inspect, inspect. Now, it's pretty clear that it's Dagger Scatter, right? We're just inspecting it three times, so we get the skill. Ah! <laughs> Try again. With 23 hit points, we're pretty safe. Let's see. And now, pretty clear result. Let's try to disarm the device. If you disarm, and you click on these uh, devices, that you first choose here. So, you make a rough guess what fits um, your... your um, what fits the squares that you get shown. 
And if you find some kind of trap there that fits, then you try to use that to disarm it. So if you find a skullcap sling and a short sword, that's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> so this, the short sword is not a bad weapon, but it can only be used as a primary weapon. It cannot uh, be used in the offhand, for example, so it's it's just pretty bad. Now, uh, we have a skullcap, which is kind of go goodish because uh, most or nearly all characters except fairies can use the skull cap so we can give someone uh, something for the head to protect them um let's see someone from the front line so either the fighter or um, the ninja and the ninja doesn't work as you can see so we're just gonna give a fighter that thing it doesn't help much as I've already said later on we'll give it to uh, someone in the back line but it's better than nothing. And we're going to rest a little bit again. And then we're going to go to the fish. And we're going to find the resurrection powder and more. There's, there's more exciting things are coming. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of loot that we haven't touched from the start. And so, I mean, we could go up here. But that's too dangerous yet because there's the most important and most dangerous boss out there. But the fish are coming. So we want the fish here, and if you get too close, they will aggro. They will not seek you out, but if you get too close, then they will. So we want them like in here, so we can take them on one by one. This lot is no match for me. Here we go. It's pretty good to go for an energy blast, of right course. There. Against them, and it's also good against them. They're pretty intelligent, so okay. they're affected by mind affecting spells like sleep. So we're gonna go and cast sleep too. Here we go. And they're gonna try to surround us as well, as you can see here. Thankfully, they're at the fighter's side. That's also the advantage of focus firing. Okay. Uh, that you won't wake up the others. Right then. Right then. These fish are pretty strong in general, but if you control them like this, they're really um, good opponents to... Go, let's go for the next one. Yeah, that's a good choice. Right then. Right then. Of course, they're easier to hit too when they are sleeping. So who's next? Right then. Right then. And because they're sleeping, we even have time to move into optimal position. And you see we're already hitting better than at the start. Right then. Right then. Yes! Gain some experience and a lot of skill ups. Fire and wizardry went up. Ha ha. Now you have to be very careful to jump down here. Only a little bit so you don't get full damage. And here we have two resurrection powder. That's pretty good. It's um, also much better than one. <laughs> but you can get two or th uh, three or four even. So we're going to give it someone who's in the back line, so just in, in case um, we need to use it. Someone sturdy in the back line, for example, the ranger. Anyone can resurrect everyone else they want with one use of resurrection powder. Later there's more resurrection powder hidden here, but that's a pretty good start. So um, let's get a little bit down here, and there's usually some crabs roaming around here. There can even be some high level called Venom Crabs. They're also pretty dangerous, but you can defeat them. It's really no problem. Um, so we're gonna go up a little bit, recover, and then cross that little lake here. Ah, there's still what's left of our spaceship. And we'll go 
go, go, go. Look there. Finding some not bullets, but bullet stones again. Some more for the gadget here. And here we have to move a little bit quickly and then more prey. Here at that stone. There's a lot of crabs they coming. Don't look tough at all. Soft shell crabs. Can even be higher level crabs sometimes, but right then. Not this time. Okay. The normal bunch of crabs. Okay. Too strong to uh, face at level one. At least with this party. There's some parties, like three fighters or something, that can face them. But uh, yeah. It's much better to do that after the jump for the resurrection powder. It's also much easier. I do it like that. Some sleep spell. There we go. Crab's no longer asleep. Right then. Okay. Gotta wait for the crab. Ouch. Try that again. Nothing surpasses the thrill of the hunt. Good damage. Right then. Right then. Waiting again. There you go, and you can see that the fighter really does a lot of damage too. Uh, which is due to his high strength. Strength also increases the damage of uh, like archery weapons, but not not of modern weapons. Which is why we'll eventually increase it in the ranger, but maybe not in the gadget here. There we go. Right then. Okay. As you can see here. See all kinds of conditions because of having our great ranger skill up mythology. Ah, that's the last one. Let's get it quickly. Ow. Ah, it missed us. Now we can go and experiment a bit with other things like make wounds. Pretty good. A lot of level ups. Especially the fire Look spell there. There. is going to help us out as like a very good uh, damage source, a reliable one in the future. And here you also find an axe. We don't want uh, most of us to skill an axe, but we can't give it maybe to the ranger just in case we have. We run out of arrows or something like that. Then an axe, and there's some okay axes for the ranger. You can see we're out of throwing weapons, so we're going to use a sling because it uses the same um, skill. So we can skill up, even if we don't have the devastating effect that um, thrown weapons have with the ninja otherwise. And you can really go forward. There's no need to save them up for later. Later, up, uh, later on you'll get better throwing weapons and you can buy more throwing weapons really use them at the start when your party is weak um, especially with a fairy ninja <laughs> that's not too much of an asset you use this strength at the start and later on you have the cane of corpus which is really really great oh, we're gonna look around a bit and you can see mm, not that many stones maybe maybe we should Split that up. Give some more of the bullet stones over here. Rest of the guys. Mm. Yeah, doing well so far. Doing well. Now we're going to go back. Uh, before. Be careful. 
don't do anything stupid that will get me killed. Um, we'll get to a very interesting person. So we, we have to go back the whole way and then move up with the elevator. And I'll show you. Yeah, it's the bridge that we've seen. Use that as an elevator. And then we get on a path that will lead us to a trader. The first trader we'll meet. And at that trader, we want to gear up so we can maybe go for what uh, many people that know wizardry would say is the boss fight of the monastery. It's a really cool fight against a really, really tough opponent. Some say it might be the hardest fight in the game at the, the point you're at. We're going to go here. Oh, and we have pustule and slimes. They're really, really strong because they can nauseate your people. So it's another challenge that we have here. Right then. It's ready the energy blasts and see if we can yeah do something maybe move away around a corner or something oh, we'll see right then we'll walk away a bit More probably time. because here it's a little bit of an open territory we'd rather be like inside of a door or in a corner than here so we'll wait here around the corner We'll just see how it works out. Okay. And that's the first step to control the damage we might be getting from these. We'll go around the next corner and the optimal thing would be to like get here and have them in that opening. So it will be done. Even better would be that one, because that's a little bit closer even. So we're basically pulling them. And we do that while walking, because slimes are relatively slow. And walking doesn't use up as much stamina as other options to move. Okay. If there's already one slime, less one. So one slime is retreating. The others are not. I'm going to stay here. The pustulant slimes are really, really strong opponents. So it's important to do that in this case. We're just still going to wait. Right then. That they're coming towards us. Huh? And they're going into a strange direction, maybe? Right then. Let's see. Let's see where they're going. I mean, that was a pretty strange movement. If they go up here, they might add us a boss. Okay. Retreating. Sometimes the movement in this game is not so great. I'll look around here. Oh, I don't know. A creature approaches. Let's see how that works out. So we've hit that one. Let's see where it goes. It's going away. Weird, 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 weird. That will not be that good. Okay. But things like that can happen in Wizardry. They're going away into different directions. But if you aggro one of them, and you still have the whole bunch. Okay. So let's see if they're just disappearing now, or if they're coming from behind. I think there's one of them coming from behind right now, so... We I'll go in here, okay. target the little slime here, and just attack. That's a languid slime, pretty weak. It's good that we have him so close. 
So we can take out the ad first. You can see from behind there's something coming. Language slime. It's taken out. Okay. We'll see if we can also get a if we'll get a, a an ad from here. It's pretty much possible. Like everyone in in one of a group, often acts like a hive mind. Uh, there's nothing coming so far from here. So we're getting on with this. It's uh, pretty important to conserve your stamina. What these will also not do, so that will be a big advantage. So if you have a really tough party, you can also sometimes out-stamina the opponents. And we have a relatively tough party. To meet them here on the bridge is also not a bad thing. So these postulant slimes are pretty strong. And it seems like we have to face them here. Here we go. This is most unfortunate. What we're gonna do here is go for the Berserk option. That does more damage for the fighter. Hits a little less good. But the more damage really more than out does this. So I'm gonna go here. There's another Pustulant Slime adding from behind, and the Vile Ooze is the problem, because Nauseated will uh, make the people lose attacks. Also lowers armor class and things. So we're unaffected because we have that already. Do that again. Pustulant Slime from behind advances. Missing that one. It's really a race against time. And we're missing again with the Berserk. Let's see. We can get this down. It'll also give us a whole lot of experience points, so it's also kind of good. And now that this is a position where we can also flee, we can jump into the water and then uh, go down everywhere. Hmm. Make wounds is a pretty reliable way to do damage as well, so we're gonna do that. And now we're even poisoned, which is bad because it lowers our armor class and gives constant damage. Come on, take it out. Very nice. So we need to take something. Uh, Potion of Light Heal. It's a good idea. And then attack the Pustulant Slime. Oh. And we have the one, as we can see here, in the back line. Oozing us a bit. So we should move. We should move now. Um, everyone's relatively okay, okay. So we're gonna walk. <laughs> the attack from behind is a problem. But we're gonna change direction. And now it should be okay again. Here we go. Should maybe start to uh, try to distribute stamina again right on our ninja. Rest should be fine. We'll attack here. Here we go. That worked. 22 stamina is pretty good. That's basically one round of attacks. We'll do that again, and we'll take the Light Hill Potion again, and we'll attack again. 
That was a good berserk attack. Good one. Uh, we can uh, bring out stamina again on the ninja. That's a pretty good plan. My wounds are beginning to slow me down. It's still another 40 hit points for the postulant slime. Now 39. It's still very, very strong, so... Right then. We'll bring out everything that can help. Keeping the stamina of the ninja high will also help her defend better. That's why this is so important to keep it relatively high. And we just wanted to open a chest and now it's getting dramatic. Here we go. Every hit point, every hit point. Got to fight for every little hit point. Here we go. Ow. And now we have done it because the thing has moved so much and fought for a while. As you can see, it's above our level. It's unconscious and so it's relatively easy to hit. That might be what helps us out a lot here. In the next round it will wake up again, but for this round, uh, not yet. But it's regenerating as long as we do not hit it. So, go for that and hope that we can finally hit it. And we're also low on stamina, that means we don't hit that well. See what we can do again. Maybe use a little bit of an energy blast. Right then. That's green, so it should be a, a safe spot. A safe use. Nice. We did it. That gives us a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, hit points. A lot of experience points. True happiness comes only. Meditation. We're just going to flee down here. As you can see, we have a lot of level ups from that tough fight. Here we go. So, more strength, more dexterity. I'll just level that a little bit. Close combat a little bit. And maybe stealth a little bit. Critical strike, dual weapons a little bit. Here we go. And our bishop. It's these two. And now we're getting to the real interesting spells. There are some sp spells that are incredibly useful, like Enchanted Blade, that gives everyone a bonus to hit and penetrate armor. And then we have Missile Shield, which protects very well against um, non-magical missiles. Both are really, really good. And uh, so we're just going to take one of them. Um, probably we don't need that much of an Enchanted Blade. Missile Shield can help us against a special uh, type of creatures that we'll encounter in the upper level of the monastery. They are called Seekers, and they have really, really fierce missile type attacks. So we're going to go for the missile shield here. Rather going for the defensive. Like that that's always a good uh, strategy in if you if you're facing like unpredictable encounters, unpredictable damage, try to bring the unpredictableness down. That will protect your characters. So, still leveling that and then going for the left behind spells. And we're already going to cast that, as you can see. It also level us up a bit. Biscuits. Just before we rest. Here we go. A lot of time to rest. You can always optimize that. Like, you could break in the middle of it and then uh, 
cast a missile shield just to train. We have a missile shield now, and as you can see, it's 31 turns, which is not bad. But it's not going to hold for a very long time. So, let's finally get back up and meet the trader. The trader will prepare us for the boss encounter. As I'd call it, and as most would call it that have experienced that crazy encounter. There can still be some attacks from creatures on this, but it's very um, improbable. Ah, it's not company. very probable. This guy's friendly. It's Burtz. Burtz is a trinity. A lot of things lying down here. Hammer Day, the 21st. Strange objects in the night sky, very odd. No landing scheduled at Anika this week. Moon Day, the 24th. More strange lights in the sky. Lord's Day, the 25th. Ansel made the announcement. We are to leave the monastery. I have been ordered to take the key to Lord Braffitt in Anika. Alas, this means the end of my stargazing. Someone looked out here. Uh, we can see the gazebo to... Good. And there's another trapped chest. Trapped. Here. We're gonna look at. And we can talk a little bit with. Oh God. Wrong with me? Now, if you have relatively high hit points, you can outsleep this poison. Which is what you should do at the start. It's just saving resources. So let's try this again. Inspecting a little bit. It was a poison dart, pretty sure. I think it was it also said that, right? Yeah. Oh. Terrible, terrible. I've already seen that we'll survive that, so we can sleep it out again. Woo. It's just a normal part of training. That's a relief. So, what have you learned? Always go in well healed to these chests. Otherwise, the trap might just kill you. So, we've inspected it three times and now we're disarming it. Hopefully, that will work out. And it does. And we have a bastard sword, which is a pretty good sword. Short bow, sweet pants, not bad, and some throwing knives for the ninja. Um, yeah, so the Bastard Sword has a little bit more damage, 4 to 10, a little bit less uh, to hit an initiative, which is not something the Long Sword has, but it, it just gives more damage, and so we'll use that for him, and we'll give the Bard uh, the Long Sword instead of the Short Sword, because we really don't need initiative on that, it's not just not needed. And we have Swede Pants, it's armor class plus three. It's not bad, and we're gonna give it to the Bard. So instead of the very, very low level cloth pants that only give one armor class, we have something else here. Now let's talk to Burtz. Hey, was that you? That ship crash? Wow, I thought you were goners for sure. You ask me, something real bad's going on. Cause your ship wasn't the first to fall out of the sky. Oh really? And now you can talk to him. You should select, yeah, the bard is auto-selected. Yeah, let's talk about him. Traveling right? salesman at your service. So we're talking about birds. Like that's the uh, improved, the, the easy conversation system. Usually you have to uh, like put in that with the help of the keyboard. And then you can ask, like talk about where it is. You can, you can even ask like, there's a city there that's called Onika. So we call, where is... Anika. I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, I have another yeah, land code here, so. need to go south of here. And if we ask him for him, Anika, even without question mark, he'll tell us south, and we can also click on that. Yep, you heard me. And he'll confirm. Salesman. Sure. Like I said. Yep, you heard me. Better talk about the monastery because that's where we're that in. Information's worth a little something. 
And now you can decide if you want to play 24 gold. And we're gonna do it in that Monastery? case. It's Higardi, the Brotherhood. Their temple, I guess. No one's in there now. They took off a while ago. They've got another temple in Arnica, though. A guy named Braffit runs it. Nice. Say, you been to Arnica yet? Arnica? No. Well, if you haven't got plans, that's a good place to go. There's all kinds of stuff happening there right now. It's just south of here. And we can, which is really great, ask more. Like, the br what's the Brotherhood? I don't know too much about it. Okay. Uh, do you know about Braffit? I know him. Okay. What about the Higadi? Nothing much to tell you. They're nice. In fact, I st uh, get most of my stuff from them. Interesting. Uh, do you know any rumors? Well, there is a rumor that you might be the third messenger. The third messenger? What's the messenger? Martin's messenger? Is that what you're asking me? Yes. That information's worth a little something. Oh, 70 years. That's very well, valuable. You see, you probably haven't heard a whole lot about it yet, but this guy named Martin, pretty much everyone on this planet is looking for him. I don't know where he is, but I know the path to find him. You have to go through Trinton. And it always records that, and you get uh, these dialogue options are stored for later on. So we'll ask him about, um, yeah, about Martin. Why not? I'm not the one to ask. All I know is that he's dead. The shaman probably knows more, though. Martin's like a legend around here. A legend, really? Yep, you heard me. Shaman. You go to Trinton. You'll find him. He's the smartest man in all of Trinton. Okay, and how do I get to Trinton? You just look for the biggest tree in the forest south of Arnica, and you're there. You'll love it. It's a great place. Nice. What about Arnica? Oh, Arnica's the city of the Higardi. It's right on the coast. I get most of my stuff from there, in fact. Nice. Um, how are you? Great! Do you have some rumors? Well, there is a rumor that you might... Yeah, yeah. Um, so no more you rumors. You for the big... Trees. Where do I find trees? You heard me. Okay, okay. Um, is there more about Martin? I'm not the one to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing much to tell you. Then mice. Okay. What about your stuff? Most of my stuff is liberated from its past possessors, so the prices are good. <laughs> okay, man. What about the Trini? The chosen ones. Of course, I don't know what we're chosen for, but if something comes up, it doesn't hurt to say it. Uh, can you teach me something? Well, I should be going soon. Okay, so what you can do is you can pickpocket him, which is a really bad idea. It's very strong. And he'll know. You can charm him with magic. You can attack him. Something that you should not do. You should just trade with him after getting the information out. So... You can see he has a little bit of stuff and one of the most important things to get if you have ranged characters is to get some ammunition. At the start you have a real big lack of ammunition. Ammunition is really cheap so stock up on it. Just buy everything. It's really cheap and it will help you out a lot. And there's, he even has some resurrection powder. I mean you can sell your resurrection powder but it wouldn't be wise. He has some potions. Um, that you can buy if you want to, and even even some more things. Yeah, that's not overboard. It's really cheap, so we're gonna buy it. It's gonna be pretty helpful. Then he has something, some some strong things, even a rapier, for example, that will whoop, that will help you to hit better. But really, I wouldn't recommend you buy some weapons or other upgrades there. You'll find better things. Just um, go for things that you can use, like maybe some healing potions. Uh, the resurrection powder is pretty useful. Or what we'll need later on is a short stuff for a quest. So we'll buy a short stuff. And uh, a shillala would be would be really good for her, but we'll find one later. So. Um, Ammunition is always a really good thing. You can also go for some little armor pieces if you want so, if you think it's necessary. Uh, it's not really important what you spend here because you'll get much more money later on. So the focus is survive and get to Arnica and then everything will be relatively good.
but we're not going to invest much more into that. Um, we'll trust that we're going to be good. So we'll say, see you. Well, I should be going. Yeah, you should be going. Goodbye. Come back and see me if you need anything. And as you can see, our communication skill even level up. Very nice. And uh, yeah, now we have all this ammo. We're going to distribute it. Let's see, she has got some ammo. She has a lot of carrying capacity because of strength and vitality, which increase both the carrying capacity. So um, that's also that's really good for a bard because a bard will have many instruments, and the instruments can get really, really um, tough to carry. If a fighter. She can also carry a lot because vitality and strength is high. Um, we want to give our rangers some more arrows. Like 100, why not? The rest of the arrows got to go to the fighter. We'll give some of the bullet stones to the bishop. And... Uh, uh, to the to the gnome and to the bishop some of them at least let's see yeah and you see that this means that your armor is going down because you're you're overweight you are, you are over your carrying capacity so how this works is the party has a carrying capacity of all the people there so that adds some uh, average encumbrance for everyone and you can put some stuff Especially the heavy stuff you should put into really strong people's um, strong people's inventory. Because they will then take this personally and it will not add to the average. So this is really bad because it will lower initiative, armor class, things like that. So we'll make them worse in combat because they cannot carry so much. So we're going to halve that. And the bishop will not have to carry so much. And it will be much better. I'm going to look around if everyone everyone has what to carry. We can give uh, the ninja more of the bullet stones, which will be good. And then we look to the beautiful sky and to the beautiful surroundings here, to the nice gazebo, and say, thank you for watching. Happy gaming to you. Next time... We're going to confront uh, the monsters on the higher level and the boss of the monastery. Have a great time until next time. Happy gaming. This is Manuel Khan signing out. See you soon and happy gaming. Have a great time until then.